Hello, welcome back to the next episode of this Sprinter van conversion. In today's video, we're going to be calculating how much load we're going to be using. We're going to size our leisure batteries and we're also going to size the solar panel system. But before we get into those calculations, I just want to answer a couple of questions from the previous video where we were talking about this control panel build. I'll put a link up here to that video if you want to have a look at that first. And the questions were relating to the size of the trip that I've installed for the inverter supply. And well spotted those couple of people who noticed that I'd grossly undersized that trip. I'd looked in the manual for my inverter and it did say that it was a 35 amp input supply and I took that for granted. But when I think about it, it's a 2000 watt inverter, two kilowatts. So divide that by 12 is actually 167 amps. So I was way off with a 40 amp breaker there. So thank you very much for people who spotted that. I've made the amendments to the schematic and I'm also going to be fitting a 200 amp fuse between the batteries and the inverter. And I'm going to be fitting that fuse local to the batteries. Somebody else spotted that it's a good idea to have that fitted as close as possible to your leisure batteries. So a couple of good revisions there and thanks very much for that. Someone also asked me the question about these single pole switches. These are a domestic switch and basically they just switch the live supply. Now this is perfectly okay with British regulations. The only time it becomes an issue is some places in Europe, when I'm on a hookup, the polarity of the live and neutral supply may be reversed. So using a single pole switch, there's a possibility there that the live would be fed via the neutral and I'm not breaking the neutral with these switches. So I, my appliances could still have a live supply on them. But the way around that is that I'm going to test the hookup. When I get to a site, I've got a plug tester, I'm gonna plug in, it will tell me what the polarity is. And then I've got a short lead, which is only a sort of uh, a one foot long lead with a plug and a socket on the other end. And that is a change over lead basically. The live and neutral are wired um, to the opposing poles, if you like. So what it will do, if I notice that I've got um, a reverse polarity on my hook on the hookup, I plug that changeover lead in, and that reverses it and puts it back right. So no matter what situation, I'm going to check what the hookup is before I plug into it, and I'm always going to have a positive live feed on my live connection into my van. So I don't see that as being an issue. The only other time it becomes a problem if you're working on these systems and you haven't got double pole isolation locally, there's a chance are that you could still have a back feed on the neutral and you could still have electricity there. But I would never ever advocate working on any kind of electric system without fully isolating both the live and neutral. I've got double pole isolation on the panel, which will kill everything in the van. So I'm quite happy with that. And lastly, somebody asked me whether I'd be charging my leisure batteries when I'd be driving along. The answer to that is yes. I've purchased this split charge relay kit and we'll be doing a video on that later when we come to install that and I'll explain exactly how this works. Okay, thank you to everybody who's commented on the videos. It is really helpful when you guys make comments and pick things up like this. So let's get into this load calculation. We need to assess how much power we're gonna be using and size these batteries. To make it easy to assess the total load that we need, I've designed this little spreadsheet. In the description below, I'll put a link to the Excel spreadsheet, and I've also created a PDF version if you just wanna write the loads in by hand. First thing we do is we make a list of all the equipment that we're gonna be using in the Sprinter. And we also write down the quantity of each item. Some of these items are in here twice, like the heater and the fridge, because they're dual voltage. They need a 12 volt and a 230 volt supply. In the next column, we write down what the supply voltage is. So these first few items are gonna need 230 volt, and these last items are gonna need 12 volts DC. Now we need to find out how many watts each appliance will use. When it comes to assessing the load on your electrical appliances, all electrical appliances will have a rating stamped on them and it will give you the information in terms of the voltage supply, 
here we can see it's 220 to 240 volts and it will either give you the kilowatt or watts rating of the appliance or it will give you the, the amps current rating in this case it's saying 1.8 to 2 kilowatts so we know exactly from that label that the maximum that we're going to be drawing is 2 kilowatts if it had the rating in amps it's simply a case of taking the volts times the amps to get the watts for items that don't have any kind of rating on them or in the case of this iPhone charger where it's just impossible to read those figures there there is a better way to assess the load that this appliance is using and that's by using one of these watt meters they're very cheap to buy I think this was less than 10 pounds that I bought off eBay and what you do is you just plug this into your wall socket you plug your appliance into this and this will tell you instantly on the display here what this is drawing in terms of watts voltage and amps so let's try a couple of devices okay so I've got the watt meter plugged into the socket I've got my iPhone charger plugged into the watt meter and here's the phone here so let's flick on at the socket there we go we can see that the phone is now charging We're only on 11% so it should be charging and in the display here we can see that's fluctuating a little bit but it's pulling about 6 watts of power let's try using the phone and just see if that increases still saying 6.1 let's play a video still 6.1 so even using the phone when it's plugged in and charging it's not going to use more than about 6 watts I've just plugged in this little electric heater it's got two heat settings on it I've got it on fan only at the moment and we can see that that's pulling 30 watts let's flick on one of the elements that's now giving out a nice little bit of heat and we can see now that shot up to 1068 watts so just over one kilowatt and if we stick on the last element oh yeah that's nice and hot now and we can see that shot up to 2034 watts so just over two kilowatts so that initial rating plate where it said 1.8 to 2 kilowatts is actually just over two kilowatts is what is actually drawing so if we were to use this in the van that's what we'd need to put down on our load sheet these little watt meters are a great way of instantly seeing exactly how much your appliances are drawing and a far more accurate way than just relying on the manufacturer's nameplates. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to purchase one of these yourself. As I say, they're very inexpensive and a brilliant tool to have. As you find out what each appliance uses, fill the figures in on the form. The next column is the amount of hours each item is going to be used in a normal day. And this part of the assessment is really a, a best estimate so in this column I've just simply put how many hours I think I could possibly use each device get in a normal day and written this figure here to get the total watt hours you need to multiply the quantity of the items by the watts by the hours used and you'll get this figure here some of these figures you can see are very high and these appliances I'm only going to use when I'm on a mains hookup this total required watt hours it would be too much to draw out of my batteries so I'm going to take these out of my assessment 
And then I'm only going to deal with these smaller loads here if, as far as my battery calculation is concerned. So on the last page, what I've done is I've highlighted these relevant items. So these top three items here, I'm not going to take into consideration. They're only going to be used when I'm on hookup. These items in yellow here require a 230 volt supply, which will come via the inverter. And these last few items are all direct 12 volts DC, which will come straight off the battery. So the sum of all the items in yellow and green is 1096 watt hours. And this is the figure that we're going to use to size the batteries. Now to size the batteries, we need to do a little bit of maths. So I'll keep it simple and we'll whiz through this. From our previous spreadsheet, we established the loads. The 230 volt appliances came to 133 watt hours and the 12 volt DC appliances came to 963 watt hours. Now the 230 volt appliances are going to be fed by the inverter and because there's an inefficiency in converting the 12 volts DC to 230 volts there's some losses within the inverter we need to take that into account. The inverter that I've selected has a reversing efficiency of 85 percent so we need to take the 133 watt hours required for the 230 volt appliances divide by that efficiency, which will obviously increase the watt hours for those appliances. Basically, you've got to put more power into the inverter than you get out the other end because there's some inefficiency there. So now we can add the 156 watt hours to the 963 watt hours and come to a total of 1,119 watt hours is what we require. When sizing the batteries, you need to take into account the depth of discharge. Basically what that is, is you can't discharge these batteries more than about 50%. As you can see from these two charts, if you start discharging the battery more than 50%, you're really gonna shorten the lifespan of the batteries. You can see from this chart on the left hand side here that around the 50% mark we're lucky if we get about 1000 cycles out of the battery before they're no good. So we definitely don't want to be discharging it any more than that. So in order to work out how big the batteries need to be we need to take this depth of discharge into account as well. I'm going to assume that I want an autonomy on my system of a couple of days. So I want my batteries to last a couple of days without having to recharge them. So I take the initial figure of 1,119 watt hours, multiply by two days, and then divide by that depth of discharge figure of 50%. That comes up with a total watt hours of 4,476. This is what I'll need to supply over that two day period. The batteries are rated at 12 volts, so 4,476 divided by 12 volts is 373 amp hours, or two batteries at at least 190 amp hours each. Now to size the solar panels. What we need to look at, I'm going to be traveling around Europe and we need to have a look back at the historic sunshine hours for the areas that we're going to be traveling around in. And I'm going to assume a worst case scenario of three hours of sunshine per day. There's also a lot of losses to be taken into account on the system. The panels can get dirty. There can be losses in the wiring and the equipment. So I'm going to assume for the purposes of this calculation, I've got some system losses of 30%. So we take our previously calculated watt hours total of 1,119. We divide by the three hours of sunshine a day and we divide by the losses in the system. This gives us a figure of 533 watts of solar panels. Now this is where we've got to be a bit realistic because I think I'm going to struggle to get close to 533 watts of solar panels physically on the space available on the roof. 
I'd love to be able to use some 60 cell panels on the roof of the van, but they're nearly 1700 millimeters long. And the width of my van at the roof point is about 1400 millimeters. So that would mean there'd be 150 millimeters or six inches of panel overhanging the side of the van either side. That's not really gonna work for me. So I'm gonna to have to go down to some smaller panels. I reckon 36 cell four by nine cell panels and I think the maximum I can get from those that currently on the market is about 160 watts per panel. Three panels I'll physically be able to fit them on the roof and that will get me somewhere close to just under 500 watts of solar. All that means is that on my load chart obviously the times that I've estimated for the various bits of equipment obviously I'm just not going to be able to use them as long or I'm not going to be able to use as many in the same day. So we've arrived at a load that we can size our leisure batteries and our solar panels. We can accurately determine exactly how much a piece of equipment is going to use in terms of power and amps. But in terms of what we're actually going to use when we're out on the road, at best, it's just an educated guess. And I think you can see the amount of consumption and the hours usage is going to vary greatly, you know, from one day to the next. Another thing that I found while I was doing my research into leisure batteries and solar panels, and what I'm amazed at is how inefficient they are. Um, your leisure batteries, you can only really safely draw 25 to 50% of their full capacity. You can't go any further than that. So you're purchasing a battery and only can use half of it. The solar panels are something typically between 15 to 17% efficient. So for the surface area, they're only giving you or converting, you know, 100% of the sunlight, you're only getting about 15 or 17% out of them. So they're very inefficient, you know, solar panels and batteries. And it probably comes down to your available space and your available budget. I think for me personally, I'm going to try and fit as much as I can on the roof in terms of solar panels, because obviously they're not always guaranteed to be in the sun. They're going to be laying flat. They're not going to be angled up correctly. So there are some built in inefficiencies. So I'm going to have to try and maximize the amount of solar that I can fit on the roof. And then in terms of leisure batteries, I'm probably going to do the same. I'm going to purchase budget wise what I think is the most that I can afford. And then hopefully that will then last me two or three days if I don't have to charge up. And then it's also a lifestyle change because I'm going to have to look at what I'm going to use in terms of laptops, cell phones, and even cooking and so forth, and all of the lighting and the heating within the van. And I'm going to have to trim everything right down and make sure that I use everything as economically as I possibly can. So to maximize that battery life. I can't like I do at home, just plug in the TV or switch on the microwave or, and just use power willy nilly. I've really got to think about it. Hope you found that to be of interest to you. Please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget, if you haven't done already, subscribe. There's going to be loads more videos coming along for this build series. I'm sure you'll find it interesting. Thanks very much. Cheers.